The Lord is going to grant you all of your divine heart desire. Oh my God. When grace is involved, protocols are broken. I declare the grace of God upon the life of this person that this message is meant for today. I don't know if you are the one, but as long as you queue in to this prayer, you queue into this topic today and just say amen. Type amen. Say amen. Even as you are listening to me, you might be typing, but say amen. Vocalize it for the Lord says, and you shall speak a thing and it shall come to pass. Amen means so shall it be. And as you say amen, so shall it be. It shall be so upon you your life in the name of Jesus. Whatsoever it is you have been looking for, whatsoever it is you have been hoping for, that have made you an object of ridicule. Oh my God. It has made you an object of ridicule. That people ridicule you. People seem to limit you. People look down on you because of that one thing that you have cried to God in so many times. You have cried to God. Listen, the Lord will give you a divine acceleration tonight. He will give you a divine vision, divine inspiration so neither you begin to work on your faith. You have faith that you will have it, but the problem is that you have not applied the work that is needed. Oh my God, is somebody listening to me? You have faith, but you have not applied the work that is needed. But the Lord shall open your eye tonight. You begin to see where you are supposed to go and where what you are not supposed to go. Where you are not supposed to go or what you are not supposed to do. The Lord shall reveal to you. The Lord shall touch you. And listen, whether you deserve it or not, hey, like that, whether you deserve it or not, that which you have been asking for. Hey, based on human ideology, human sympathy, and human judgment and all that, they say you do not deserve it. But God is going to break up protocols tonight because grace is involved. The mighty hand of God shall break protocols tonight and you will achieve your goals in the name of Jesus. The mighty hand of God is going to break all protocols. Ah, They say, no, you are not qualified for this. You are not due for this. You are not qualified for this. They need this paper. They need that paper. They need this person to come and sign. They need that person to give consent. And you are wondering. The people, they said they need to give consent. Before they can, we can work for you, they need human approval for you to move forward. Ah, And the human, being human, they are not ready to give that approval because they don't want you to enjoy what they are enjoying. They don't want you to be where they are so that you do not become equal with them or even above them. Oh my God. There was a time where nobody wants anybody to be above them. So far you are equal. But right now, the word says, don't be above me. Don't even be my equal. They want you down. But God is breaking protocols tonight. Ha! God is breaking protocols tonight. That place where they said they need human approval before your breakthrough can come through. God will stand and he shall speak for you so long as you kill into the his word, so long as you do that which is, which is expected of you, so long as you activate your faith and put some work to it in the name of Jesus. So shall it be unto you. I don't know who is listening to me right now. God is working on your behalf. Ah, God Almighty, those who have mocked you, they will turn around to celebrate with you. Ah, they, they, they. listen, there are some mockery sometimes that are of God. Yeah, somebody might be disappointed at hearing this right now. Listen, there are some mockery that are of God. Yes, God pushes people sometimes to mock you of some certain situation so that you buckle up your seat and say, you know what? I have to prove these people wrong. But you are not the one that's going to prove them wrong. Your faith and that divine hand of the most high God is going to prove everyone wrong about your life. I don't know who's mocking you. You never get paper. Hey, your mates don't marry. You never marry. Hey, la da 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 your mates don't they born, you never born. Hey, your mates don't achieve this, achieve that. Since when you there abroad, you never. Hey, you there in Nigeria. Look, look, look. You there school for how many years? Everybody, they meet you for school. They pass, come out. Then they meet you for school. They pass, come out. For where? Your case? Now zero. The Lord says he is meeting you at the point of your need. Only if you can keep to his word and hold on to his faith. Listen, your mate finish school the same time you finish. They are all working in their office in one way or the other. Whoever is running business, they are group. You are just there. Oh my God. You are just there. It's as if even people when you go to school, they are doing better than you. And you are wondering what is the point of this time wasted? What is the point of this? Listen, God is going to work upon your life this year 2020. The new decade that is coming. You are going in there, a new person on your map. 
Get set and go. If you are ready to queue in, I declare divine acceleration upon your life in the name of Jesus. That which people used to mock you, we turn around for your favor in the name of Jesus. And they say, Matt, who mocked you before? We come around and sing praises with you, glorifying the name of the Lord concerning your life in the name of Jesus. So shall it be, so shall it be, so shall it be, so shall it be, so shall it be in the morning, so shall it be in the noon, so shall it be in the evening, so shall it be in the night. When you are awake, so shall it be. In your spiritual life, so shall it be. In your financial life, so shall it be. In your marital life, so shall it be. In your social life, so shall it be. God will elevate you. You begin to come in contact with people. Who will bring out the best in you. Not those that will cover up the best in you. So I declare. So we declare. In one accord with the Holy Spirit. And so shall it be. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. Every lie the devil have told you. Any lie the devil have told you to whichever vessel or whatsoever. That limited you this year. The Lord will erase those voices out of your head. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen, 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 amen in the name of Jesus. Listen, I am hearing it so clearly. There's somebody concerning your children. You are down. You are down because why is it like this? Why is it like this? Why is it I'm not doing right? What is it I did not do? Why you are looking at other people's children putting your own down because of whatever it is you are going through with them. The Lord says I should tell you the title of this message today. Stop counting your losses and start counting your blessings. Oh my God, I thank you. Jehovah, I worship you. Stop counting your losses and start counting your blessings. That is the problem of so many people today. Many of you are here. You are listening to me. Listen. You are here. You are listening to me. You are watching me. You are hearing this. Most of you, you want to log that right now. But the spirit of the Lord is going to whip you so hard until you queue in tonight and listen. Because you need this. There are so many of you. You are been so consumed with counting your losses that you have forgotten you have forgot totally to count your blessings the word of the lord says count your blessings and name them one after the other and you will see what the lord has done and he says in everything in every situation give thanks to the lord that is the word of god and the word of the lord says god in a bit in the praises of his people god in a bit in the thanksgiving of his people if you want to locate God, learn to praise him in whichever situation you find yourself. If you want to locate God, if you want God to hear from you, stop being a complainer. Stop complaining. Just start praising. Stop complaining. Stop beating down yourself. Stop looking at other people, counting other people's blessings and forgetting to count yours. Stop looking at the person you feel is better than you, forgetting there is a place you probably are better than that person. Oh, you might not see it yet, but if you can count and count your blessings today. God says, you should learn. Start 2020. We are still in January. Start counting your blessings and stop counting your losses. Oh my gosh. Stop counting your losses. Stop it. It is 2020. Stop focusing too much on your losses. Stop focusing too much on your weak point. Stop focusing too much on the area that you feel, oh, I would have done better in this area. I wish I am B&B. I wish I am this. I wish I'm Brother Paul. I wish I'm Brother Joshua. I wish I'm Sister Mary. I wish I'm Sister Rose. I wish I'm this. I wish I'm that. The Lord says, stop witching. Stop wishing. Stop wishing. Count your blessings. Count your blessings. You will realize there are things you have that those that seems better than you are praying for that they don't. Oh my God. There are things you have that those who you are looking up to are wishing for, but they don't have it yet. Not because they are not as righteous as you. But because I choose this, who I bless at a time. Do you get? Stop counting your losses. Stop 
counting your losses. Stop focusing on your weak point. Stop focusing on your error. Stop counting all your mistake. Stop focusing your, on your mistake. Stop putting yourself down because of your mistake. Mistakes are meant to learn from. Start counting your blessings from today. For many of you, can't 10 years ago compared to now. Is it the same? Is where you are coming from better than where you are? And even if so, say, so okay, where I'm coming from is better than where I am now. Hey, how many people, where you, where you left, where you were there, can't how many people that you knew, can't how many RYP you have seen, whether on social media or by sale or whatsoever, people who were there while you were there, people who had it all while you had nothing, where are they today? But you are still here. When there is life, there is hope. You are still here. And there's a reason why you are still here. Stop counting your losses and start counting your blessings. There are many of you, you are here. Husband seems to be the big deal now. Whoever has husband is the one that is at the top. Especially now when you go to Facebook, every corner you turn to on Facebook street, everybody is doing wedding. People are celebrating. And you that is watching another brother, that sister, you have presumed, oh my God, you have predicted that by this time, 2020, you will be married and settle down. But marriage is not forthcoming. Stop counting your losses. Focus on your blessings focus on your blessings your case take your case as that special demand that the chef need to take time to work on stop it somebody order indomie indomie is two minutes to prepare indomie take two minutes to prepare you don't compare yourself you who went to a restaurant and ordered all the delicacies. Oh my God. You are comparing yourself to somebody who went and ordered for noodles. And before you know it, even before you are even sitting and relaxing, noodles is already there. It takes two minutes. But what you want, what God has seen that is best for you, needed time to prepare. And what is this time? This time is the time where he prepares you to be able to handle what he's going to give to you. God is preparing you for a better auction. God is pre preparing you for a better one. Ah, Jesus. Listen, calm your nerves. My purpose of coming here tonight is to tell somebody, calm your nerves. Stop counting other people. Many of you, you can't other people blessing. Oh, she's like this. Oh, he's like that. He has this. She has that. You are killing yourself. You are killing yourself over the blessings of other people. So much so that you are forgotten to count your own blessings. You are forgotten to count your blessings because you are too carried away counting other people's blessings. Now you know when sister A buy car. Now you know when sister B buy, uh, uh, buy land. You know when sister A build house. You know when sister B build. You are forgotten to count. Perhaps the peace you have, sister B do not have that. Brother A do not have that. You are busy counting. You are busy counting. It's all going well for Sister A right now. She has a house, she has husband, she has children, she has this, she has that, she's happy. Calm yourself. There is time for everything. There is time for... Good lesson, let me tell you. God did not create anybody to come to this planet Earth and suffer. That is what you need to know. How you lay your bed is how you lie on it. The problem is, many of you want to do better, but you are not ready to take the bull by the horn. You are not ready to take the risk because you are busy thinking, oh, what if it doesn't work out? Oh my God. If it doesn't work out, it's not meant to be. Did you get it? What if is this? What if is that? Risk. Everything in life is a risk everything in life is a risk
Even God himself risked his own begotten son just for the word. He knew that the word, the man, mind of men, the heart of men are deep and dark and desperately wicked. Yet he sent the solely begotten son into the word, knowing what the word will do to him. Did you get? Did you get? Are you listening? Stop counting your losses. You are be consumed. You are carried away. Counting your losses. That you are forgetting your blessings. You have been carried away. Counting somebody else's blessings. Forgetting your own blessings. You are alive. You are not dead. There are many people who are dead. Evil sister. So, 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 so that you were counting his blessings. You heard that he passed. she passed away. But you are still here. You moved on from her. I got to your next target and start counting what they have what they don't have what they do what they don't do eh and you are forgotten you have let go of yourself you are forgotten that you are somebody you are forgotten that god brought you from nowhere you are where you are now you are forgotten that there was a time three square may is a big deal for you now you even have to eat nyafu nyafu and dash to somebody now you have leftover to throw in the bin whereas where you are coming from there is nothing like leftover leftover no day leftover is not in your dictionary but right now you can eat have leftover that you have to Put in the bin. You are not counting your blessings. You are counting who have built mansions, who have buy a lot of luxury cars, who is living in a luxury home, who is traveling from one city to one country to another. You are busy counting who is shining. Oh my God. You are busy counting my blessings. Oh, B and B is like this. B and B is educated. B and B is can speak English. B and B is. Count your blessings and name them one after the other. You will realize what God has done for you is a process. He's bringing you from place to place. For some of you, God has brought you to a point that he needs you to apply work. For some of you, they are telling where are you there now? You have documents. You have everything. There are things you can do to upgrade yourself in the country that you are, in the society that you are. But no, no, you are not going to do it. All you do is lay back. And count other people blessings. Abba, you want to change your life even when every opportunity is presented right before you. You are thinking your comfort zone. Oh, I cannot. I cannot. Have you tried and see that you couldn't? Have you tried? No, you are not going to try. Because it takes a lot of work. And God is telling you. God is telling you. God is telling you. Go, go, do it. Many of you are in abroad. Listen, I have see, I'm sick and tired of hearing people say, I illiterate. You don't go to school. You don't listen. So long as you are here abroad, it is not in Africa where education depends on how heavy or how large the pocket, your pocket is or your parents' pocket is. You are here now. You have left Africa to the Western world where you have easy access to education where you can study even if it's not big time education you don't go for degree bachelor's or whatsoever ever 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 there are courses there are certificates you can lay your hands on that will enable you to walk into a place of your choice and demand for a job but no you are not ready mm -mm. you are not ready you don't want to crack your brain of course you have limited yourself to think that eh, eh, you are not qualified. You don't know book. You know office study. Who told you? You are in a place where there is help for everybody. No matter how dull or dumb you are. This is January. I need to motivate somebody. No matter how dull or dumb you think you are up there. There is a session for everybody in a place where you go to educate yourself. If they feel that your brain is too dumb, you are not getting it. Oh my God, Jehovah Jared, there are people they will assign to you. There's something called one-on-one -on -one education. They will slow themselves down until you are able to catch up with them. But no, you don't want to go. For some of you now, money, now you have priority right now. And then when you see somebody who take their time to study, you become jealous, envious, or better still, wishing to be like them. Why are you wishing where you can easily be like them? In a land where you have every opportunity to even do better than them. Why are you wishing? I can't speak English. I can't speak. Excuse me. To learn how to speak English. Eh? 
is your phone. All you need is your phone, your phone, your phone. Your phone is what you need. You can do online course or not to speak English. Yes, In, you can do English course, English course. Online, the time you spend online, Google it from one Aproco channel to another. The time you spend online committing all manner of venom on people's platform. The time you spend online looking for who to rubbish, who to post their negative videos and all that. Spend it studying online. Trust me, in the period of nine months, five months, one year, Massimo, you will come at a better version of you. I'm telling you, stop it. You have been abroad for how many years now? How many years have you been abroad? It's not Africa that you say, I don't get money to do one. You have been abroad for so many years. Count your blessings and stop counting your losses. Count it. The Lord brought you from a place where you are incapacitated. He brought you, brought you out from a place where you become, where you become, uh, um, what's it called? Where you become uh, an handicapped, financially handicapped. Where you don't have money to upgrade yourself. He brought you to a place where you don't need to have money to upgrade yourself in those areas. But yet, you are complaining after so many years. Who do you think you're doing? You are complaining after so many years abroad. When you have the opportunity to study what you want to study, even if you cannot go in person, you have online, it, all it needs is dedication. All it needs is your dedication, your commitment. Commitment and dedication is all you need. Determination, determine to do it. Commit your time and yourself to it. Tell yourself, this is what I want. Sketch out your goals. You will know. Before you know it, you are there. There are many channels where they teach English language. But no, you don't have time to stay there. The only time you have is where to stay. Who shit for church? Who shit for market? Who piss for bed? Who do this? Who do that? Who friend another person? Your husband? Uh, who friend this? Who friend that? The time you had, you have dedicated, dedicated it to places where... You don't profit anything. Rather, your morals are brought down. That which was taking time, that which your parent took time to instill on you, is gradually, gradually, you know, they're slicing it off. That is places where you devote your time. And then you will come and say, I don't know how to speak English. Who told you English? You have to put your head on the ground and raise your legs to the up, to the top to, for you to learn English. Who told you that? Who even told you that you even need to be educated to know how to speak English? Who told you that? Did you know that there are some English-speaking people who did not go to school at all? Who have no certificate to show for it? Excuse me. Why limit yourself when you have the ability to go further? Why? 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 I'm sorry I'm not taking any comment right now, but I, I can see somebody asking for a healing upon somebody. I declare by the power in the name of Jesus, in accordance with everybody watching me right now, may healing come upon you. There's going to be a prayer section where we take prayer requests for everyone. If you have a prayer request, think it down. When that section comes on this video, bring out your prayer request and we will join hands together in faith. We will connect. If there's no distance in the realm of the spirit, we will connect together and declare according to the word of God. We pray according to the word of God upon you. We will take a prayer request, but hold on there. 2020, the Lord told me, oh my God, it was Christmas period when the Lord told me. He called me by my name and told me, you know what? 2018, 2019 was a year of tribulation. And he said, many were blown away by the winds. He brought 2020. I want to get hold of you. Oh my God. He said, you have let go. You have let go. I'm telling you, I'm not supposed to tell you this, but I'm telling you this. You have let, he said, you have let go. You have let go of that which I called you to do. Oh my God. I'm human. I'm human. He said, seven times the righteous fall, but seven times they will rise again. Even He said, why we think we are righteous? Our righteousness is like a filthy rag before him. He told me, 2020, I am going to elevate you. 
Oh my God, you guys, go and mark this day. He said, I will elevate you 2020. I will elevate you 2020. He said, eyes have not seen, neither have ears heard what I have in store for you. He said, you have not even imagined it yet. But I will elevate you. He said, but Q, Q into my word. Q under my will and let me use you. And I have decided that this 2020, this 2020, I am going to queue under the anointing of God. I don't care who wash, who doesn't wash. I don't care who like it, who doesn't like it. I don't care who say what or who say this or that. I am going to queue under the anointing, under the canopy of the Most High God and let him do what is best for me. I don't know you who is watching me. But God says I should tell you to stop, stop, stop it, stop it. You have done that for too long. And because that's what you have become good at, you have become a specialist of it, that you have covered your glory by yourself. And you are praying against witches and wizards. God says I should tell you, it is not witches and wizards that has had you bound. It is you because you have become an, an architect. You have become that person that know how to count other people's blessings, but don't know how to count yours. Yes, you have become that person. You know how to count other people's blessing. In fact, you can narrate when this person start looking like this. When this person did this. So, so, so time last year, she was like this. But this time this year, she is like this. She is like that. But you have forgotten yourself in the process. See? Did you get you are good at keeping record of every other person, but you have lost track of your own self. You have lost track. You have lost track of yourself. You keep record of every other person's progress. But your own progress, you have lost track. And as such, so, you feel like you are stagnated. You are not making any progress. But you are. Many of you, eh? You had... A terrible encounter. Last year, you thought you were going to die in the process. Last two years, you thought you were going to die in the process. Last three years, last four years, you thought you were going to die in the process. You never thought that this day you will be standing strong and tall. You thought your life had come to an end. Many of you don't even think that today you will still be alive. For whatever is it that happened to you, for whatever reasons, you thought by now, your face, will be covered in shame. But God is still keeping you strong, standing, and tall. Yet, you are counting other people's blessing, Forgetting to count yours. Forgetting to count yours. Stop counting other people's blessings. Count your blessings. The word of God says, it did not say, count be and be blessings. It did not tell you to count brother A, brother B, brother Z, brother Paul and sister Angela's blessings. It says, count your blessings and see what the Lord has done. Count your blessings. Count your blessings. Count your blessings. Many of you have children. <laughs> oh my. Many of you have children. Not for your own making, you become a single mother. But today, you are busy counting. Oh, eh? Be and be there with her husband. This one there with her husband. The other one there with her husband. And you know that it is not fault of yours that you are not with your husband or the father of your children. But rather, you are consumed focusing on your errors, focusing on your losses. Oh, to say I'm not for no bone for that. Do you know how many people are looking for children? Just one. People who have money. People who have been in a relationship for like forever. They have been married for years, but they are praying every day. Couples who love themselves like scatter, not even love letting childlessness bring anything between them. They love themselves to death. Yet they pray together, joining hand together, asking for one fruit of the womb. You have it. Unfortunately, your relationship collapsed. But you are there. Rather for you to count your blessings. So, oh God, you said in your word that they shall be not barren in the land. I am among those who fulfill your word. You are busy counting who the husband has. 
Who know the husband? Yes. Hey, who get you man? Who they marry? Who never marry? Hey, oh, brother, hey, do you this? Oh, now so your picky papa do you this? Now so your picky papa do you that? Oh, he do you this? He can't beat me. He can't do this. He can't do that. Excuse me. Count your blessings and let go of your losses. Stop counting your losses and focus on your blessings. Did you get? There are people praying for one seed. How many did you have? How many did you have? And then you are beating yourself every now and then. You have become so small. You are so ashamed to stand where your mate stand. Your mind is telling you. Your spirit is telling you. Even your soul. You have condemned it. Oh. You know this. You know that. You pretend you are okay. But it's a lie. It's a lie. You have beat down yourself so much in the secret. You have beat down yourself so much in your closet. But when you come and pray, I'm okay. It's a lie. The Lord says I should tell you. Stop counting your losses and focus on your blessings. Stop counting your losses and focus on your blessings. Ah, for some of you, eh? Then, now firewood, just in case you have forgotten, let me remind some of you. Some of you, now firewood, do not go fetch from bush then. Sell for people who feel bigger and richer than you before you can earn a square meal of, in a day. Before the Lord, in which, listen, there are some situations that looks ugly. Eh? There are some situations that look ugly. But don't, stop, stop counting your losses. Oh, he still say I don't have for, eh, eh. There is nothing you should change about your life. In your past, there is nothing you should change about your past. There are some situations that look ugly, but God use it to take you to your next level. Something has to happen. In the case of Joseph, Joseph was sold into slavery. Joseph was sold into slavery by his own family, his own brothers and sisters. His own family, his own family, same blood with him. They sold him into slavery. Thinking, mm, I better make it go. We don't have use for him. I miss the pain. The agony, the imprisonment. Joseph even went to prison. Did you guys know that? Joseph went to prison. But God wasn't done with it. God was taking him somewhere. But I'm sure Joseph must have wondered, oh God, why me? Ah, when they will be talking, listing the name of prisoners. Oh, you prisoner, you convicted, uh, whatever. You prisoner, you slave. You this, like many of you have rightly been called. You prostitute. You this, you that. But many of you looking at me right now, you know you did that nonsense. Not because it's what you want for your life. Because it's what you find yourself doing at the moment just to aim a living, a breakthrough to cater for your family. Ah, you never planned for that. And when an opportunity came for you to escape that, to live such a life, you left. I am not talking for those who the Lord have given opportunity. You get documents. You get everything that you desire to live such a reckless, reckless life. But you choose to stay, choose to stay there. It is your own making, not God this time. But there are some of you, some of you here, for God to remove you from where you are, for God to make you the person that you will look back on, the person that will be able to stand tall, he remove you from a certain place to a certain place, no minding how ugly the situation was. Not minding how ugly the situation is. Eh? And then he brought you to the place where you are now. And he has given you opportunity to move forward. But you are hanging there. Counting other people's blessings. Forgetting to count your blessings. You are counting your losses. I have not do this. To say I know they yet. To say I know. Listen, listen, listen. God says I should tell you. He brought you to where you are. For a reason. And he's bringing you out of there. But you have to be ready. Stop counting your losses. And focus on your blessings. Yes. Like I was saying earlier. Many of you. Now fire wood. Now go first. Before you fish up one square me. Many of you. Now, uh, what do they call it? Farming. You go farming. Which kind of farming you never do? You clear grasses for people. Just to get paid. So that. You will be able to buy one 
you know aloko for your waist you know it's be aloko fairly used clothes not even original not even new many of you now gari una the fry for people oh my god jesus speak to me now gari una the fry for people before una fi emerge you na village are you understand do you understand are you understanding me oh my gosh many of you there are many of you many of you here many of you here you beg to feed before you left where you are ah many of you na parents na kawosa una what they call a kawosa people who go buy things on credit or eat so many people if you want to hear hear if you don't want to hear i have to point out so many things today so you start counting your blessings and stop counting your losses many of you now, your parents beg from one house from one neighbor's house to another to feed you guys to feed you at a point many of you you stay under the sun hawking i don't know what you hawked huh? but you hawked things you see other people do now that you you feel bad because you know how it was when you went through it yes Many of you, you have to go hawking. You hawk before your parents can afford just one or two square me a day. Proper, proper food, oh, proper food. One square me a day or two morning and in the evening. Forget afternoon food. <laughs> My God, and you are here where you are now, where you can afford more than three square me that even would dump your leftover in the bin many of you there's nothing like leftover in your house before you came where you are now there was nothing there was nothing like leftover because your leftover is for tomorrow you don't dump them in the bin but now you eat your finger fine you dump them in the bin and you are here busy counting other people blessings thinking oh you are dejected oh god is not answering your prayer oh this person is better than you did you know where God is taking you from? Have you sat down to think back where God has brought you from? Have you sat down to think about this? Have you sat down to think about where God brought you from? Where you have to walk under the scorching sun just for your parents to feed you? Oh my God. Many of you drop out of school, not because you didn't want to go to school, not because you didn't have the brain, because your parents could not afford it. When you should be sitting in the classroom studying, your parents are sending you, go and hawk. Go and hawk. Go and say this. Go and say that. You have no option because you guys have to eat. Oh my God, everlasting father. Many of you were at a place at a time. Even those of you say when I go to school for Nigeria, you know how many hours you have to trek to get to your school gosh sometimes you starve during lunch because you can't go because the distance is too far just to study and now you are at a place where you do like this you have what you have you do like this and you are complaining i never get this i never get that now host a day on a what do you call it there a duro house now duro house a day i'm in the hostel i'm in the government house you know i don't have much the money you earn now this weekly payment they give you or the monthly payment they give you where you are coming from do you have any opportunity to get that before? Even with all your hawking and all that, do you earn as much as that? Why are you counting your losses, forgetting to count your blessings? Yes. I see some young folks in the hostess. We call it hostess here. In some of you, in some of the countries, you call it a doodle house. You misbehave, you do anyhow. You do some certain video like children who are out of control, like children were never born of a mother or of a woman who were never even cultured or trained in any moral or play standard. I know African, so long as you come from Africa, so long you come from Africa, don't tell me your parents did not train you. If your parents not train you, eh, street parent, eh, in Africa, is not only your biological parents that you have, you have street parents. They cultured you. You see people. That is, ah, ah, Jesus. This is not, we come from Africa, we know the way it is. 
where you be, be, be before your father get to beat you or your mother get to beat you strangers your neighbor they got to give you what is due for you and when you go home to report to your parents thinking they will side you if you are the one wrong you get more on top of it did you get we come from a place where if you even pass your head that you know greet and it's dead to report to your parents that you know greet and use your see her, you know greet her. oh my god you are done for it you are done for it except those of you for unfortunately you came out from homes where the pay, your mother were never around perhaps she has to stress to put food on your table she's out all day your father you know a drunkard who doesn't know how to put the children in order because trust me even if your child your father is a farmer your father is a the poorest person who is mama they still know how to came some senses into you and then you came here you are misbehaving you are misbehaving I'm misbehaving. Why? Because you have forgotten to count your blessings and leave your losses behind. You have tell yourself, oh, what kind of life is this? Oh, why am I doing this? Oh, they brought me here to do this, my dear. It is a process. It is a process. It is a process. You did not bring yourself abroad. Somebody brought you here. It is a process. Joseph was sold into slavery. Did you know what Joseph did while he was slavery? You have no idea. There are many things the Bible did not record. All we know is that he was brought to slavery. He served as so, 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 so. And then he was put into prison. Did you know what they go through when they're in the prison? Did you know? Ask anybody who, is in prison, who, who goes to prison here. Whether abroad or in Nigeria, they will tell you what they go through when they're in prison. But there are many things that the Bible did not record. All we know is that he was in the prison. What happened in the prison? Other than the dream that we heard about. Where, the, where are the other things that happened? But no matter what happened, he kept his faith strong in the Lord. He know what is right and what is wrong. He would not let his situation reduce him to settle for anything. That is what brought out Joseph from a prisoner to a minister. Do you get? He came out from a prisoner to a minister. Why? Because he concentrates on counting his blessings rather than his losses. If he was, oh, the one that dwell on his losses, oh, oh, let me, look at this, look, they did this to me, they did that to me. Oh, let me, they sold me to prison, they sold me to slavery, sorry. They sold me to slavery. How can my own brothers do this to me? How can my own family do this to me? As a result of that, start living rec rec recklessly. If as a result of that, he started living recklessly. Do you think it will be where he is today. Oh, living God. Did you think Joseph would have been promoted all the way from a prisoner to a minister in a country that he wasn't a citizen? He wasn't even a citizen of the country. Citizenship had not even been granted to him, but he was promoted all of a sudden. I hope somebody is getting this because there are some people, they are not logically blessed to understand messages. But I'm telling somebody today, stop counting your losses. Stop dwelling on your losses. Stop dwelling on your pain and frustration. Stop dwelling on your heartbreak. Stop dwelling on that person who did you so wrong. Stop dwelling on that person you wish would have been this, be that, be that on your, in your life. But rather, choose to take the other way out. Listen, stop dwelling in your losses. Start counting your blessings. You will see that everyone, everything has a time and season in your life. Everyone has a role to play in your life. Did you get? Did you understand? If they hadn't sold Joseph to slavery, it wouldn't have been a minister. God knew that there was going to be a famine. There was going to be a time that his family would depend on him to survive. Did you get? There is God. There was going to be a time where not even just his family this time. His country at large will depend on him to survive. Something has to happen for some certain things to take place. Oh my God. Listen. 
something had to happen. Some things that you look back on you are not proud of had to happen for you to be where you are today. Everything. Listen, God has a plan for everything. God has a plan for everything. Some people don't get it. I was talking to some people this past week and I said, God has a way of doing this. God works in a mysterious way. When God sees that this thing is going to be a problem for you in the future, he has a way of making things that is not pleasant to happen to remove that thing from your way. Oh my God. But some people did not understand why I was passing that message. But I'm passing the message for you today. You, you, you that is watching me and listening to me right now. Whatever happened to you, there is a reason for it. God has seen that this thing is going to kill you in the future. It's going to destroy you in the future. But he made it happen now in a way that is not going to kill you. But it's going to bring you out of that situation. For you to continue the journey that he had placed you on this planet Earth to continue. Did you hear it? Did you hear it? So relax. Stop counting your losses. Focus on your blessings. Yes. Stop counting your losses. Focus on your blessings. You are where you are today for a reason. But before you get to where you are today, there are so many ugly situations that happened to push you out of where you are. So where, sorry, there are so many ugly situations that happen to push you out of where you were to where you are today. You get many ugly situations happened to push you out of where you were that you thought you had arrived. Huh. And God look at you and say, no, 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 you have not. Your eyes have not seen, neither have your ears heard. Neither have you even imagined where I'm taking you to. You thought you were comfortable here. For you to get out of there, something has to happen. Did you get? It's just the same way that somebody has to die, has to exit this planet Earth to make heaven. That's the same way some ugly situation, death is ugly to the eyes of human. But you shall not die, shall not die until we accomplish our purpose here on Earth by the God, by the God that created us in the name of Jesus. Listen. Ugly situations sometimes happen to remove you from where you were and bring you to where you are now. So stop letting that ugly situation reduce you. Stop letting your ugly situation bring you to a place where you become so small. Hey, listen. The word of God says, the thief commits not to steal, but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The thief commits not. The thief did not just come alone to please you. Thieves do not come to appreciate you. They did not come to uplift you or promote you. No. Thief. You know what they do? They come to kill, to steal, and to destroy your happiness, to destroy your self-esteem, to destroy that which make you feel on top of the world. Don't you get it? Situations, ugly situations, some certainties happen sometimes to reduce you so that you don't achieve that which you have been destined to be. But you need to be wise. You need to be spiritually inclined. You need to be, to be up at a lot up there spiritually and physically to know when the thief come to steal your happiness, to steal your joy, to steal your inspiration, to cover your glory. Oh my God. I will dwell more on this next time. But I'm going to cut this short for today. Did you guess? There are some things that happen to you. Listen, whenever you start shining, Whenever you feel like you are on top of there, for some of you, you feel like you are reaching there already and all of a sudden something happened and you wonder why am I here? It is not your fault. Did you get? The thief, the devil, the father of all liars. The devil is the father of all lies and all liars. Yes. The father of all blackmailers who have come to blackmail you to put you under a shit hole. Jesus of Nazareth. The father of all sicknesses and all diseases. The devil. The father. Of all good planners. 
the plan coup against you have to reduce you have to bring you down don't you get it why because god the devil have seen where god is taking you to and he's gonna raise up his army he's gonna raise up his army in whichever form or way they come up the god that i serve the God that you have been calling upon, but I've refused to hear him talking to you, says, I should tell you, stop counting your losses and focus on your blessings and where I am taking you to. Did you get? Whatever you are passing through, my sister, whatever you are passing through, my brother, it is not your end. Your past is not what make you. Your present and your future is what make you not your past. Let nobody bring up your ugly past to you to reduce you. Let no one bring up what you've been through. What you've been through now you are struggling. You are fighting to get to where you know the God that you serve have destined you to be. But they, are still, they bring it up every now and then. Don't you get it? The devil is a thief who have come in the night to steal, to kill, and to destroy your happiness. They will flash up your weaknesses to your face. They will flash your past or your ugly past to your face. They will flash to your face that which they are cooked up to bring you down. But hey, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Be strong and start firm. Activate your faith. And while you are having that faith, remember that faith without work is dead. How can you say you have faith? The word of God says, how can you say you have faith and not put work to it? What is the work? Look them in the face. Tell them, I am who I am. You are who you are. Greater is he that is in me. Than he that is in the world. I don't know who I'm talking to today. But the Lord says I should tell you. Your situation. Do not define you. The ugly situations that you are now. The terrible situations that you are now. Do not define you. Just relax. Stop trying to prove yourself to the world. Relax. And key into my report. Jesus. Key into my report. Stop letting the report of the world determine or define you. Key into my report. But most of you are so are so so stubborn. You are stubborn children. You are not keen into the report of the world. Rather, you have chosen to key into the you are not keen into the report of God, but you have chosen to key into the report of the world. Oh, she said. He said, he can't talk like this. He can't talk like that. She can't talk like this. She can't talk like that. Hey, the mouth is meant to speak. Ears are meant to hear. Listen. Let those who want to hear, hear. Let those who want to speak, speak. But what you should be concerned about is the report of God concerning your life, not the report of a hater, the report of those who have been anointed by the devil to cover up your glory. Don't you get it? Why do you think they mock you with your weaknesses? Why do you think they mock you with your past? Why do you think they mock you with that which you lack? Which you think you lack now? Why do you think they mock you? They flash to your face all the time. That part of your life that you want to forget. Hey! The trick of the devil. Ha! But hey, the word of God says, It disappoints the diversities of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. Did you get that? He disappointed the diversities of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. What happened to that word of God in your life? It is the crafty way of the wicked to succumb you, to reduce you, to cover your glory, to make you feel less of yourself, to forget the glory of God upon your life, to forget the reports of God upon your life. But he, God says, I should tell you, stop counting your losses. Focus on your blessings. Forget about what brother A said to you, what brother B said to you, what happened to you, how you should have been this, how you should have. Let me tell you, Job 
You all remember Job in the word of God, right? In the Bible. Job was happy. Ah, Jesus. Job was making merry. People wanted to associate with Job because Job has it all. Oh my God. Even in Job thinking he has it all, he had nothing. Trust me. You know why I, had, I said he had nothing? I'm coming there. And the devil, the father of all lies and of all everything that is evil, saw that Job was happy. Ah, he couldn't tolerate it. He sat down. He planned. He thought. He think and orchestrated everything that he could do to bring Job down. Why is Job happy? Why is everything talking about Job in a good way? Why is everybody loving to associate with Job? Why is Job feeling like on top of the world? You know what he did? He went to God. Ah! Ah, God. I know you are proud of Job. How well he's doing. Oh my gosh. <laughs> You are so happy about Job, how well he's doing. But trust me, the reason why he's so happy, the reason why he's so full of himself, the reason why he praises you, the reason why he thinks he's up there is because of these blessings that you gave him. Just take away the blessings. And what is this blessing? It wasn't a material thing. Fulfillment, accomplishment, happiness, joy, self-containment that Job had. Job was happy with who he was. Job was happy with who he had become. Job was happy thinking there is nobody above me, even when there is so many others above him. But devil was not happy with that. He had to come in. Just take away these things and see if it do not cost you. And what is this, that, what is that cause? And see if he do not hide himself in shame. Take away those things as if Job do not hide himself in shame. Listen, there are many of you hmm, who you least expect will come against you. Who you least expect that will lie against you. There are so many lies that have been said against you. There are so many, so many blasphemy that have been blasphemed against you. There are so many wrong that have been done against you. And as a result of that, you are hiding yourself in shame. And you know that you are not what was said about you. Listen, hey, Everything that Job had was taken away from him. Job did not shake. Oh. Devil has to come through his closest person. The person he least expects that will say that knowing who he was, knowing who he is, knowing that he's this person that has sold that for goodness. The devil came through it. And who was it? Job's wife. His better half, according to you people call it. His better half. Job came through it. Uh, the devil came through it to Job. And he said, Job, what are you living for? <laughs> Who do you think you are? Just curse God and die. Did you know what Job, Job looked at him and said, you know what? You have not seen the end of it yet. He kept to his feet. He did not let the voice, the credible voice of his wife, the familiar voice of his wife, the believable voice of his wife, the convincing voice of his wife. He did not let it reduce him. I don't know whose voice have reduced you, you that is watching me. I don't know whose voice you've heard that have caged you in that place where you are. I don't know whose voice you've heard that have made you want to hide away from the world. I don't know whose voice I've been talking about you, whose voice I've been speaking against you, whose voice I've decided to rubbish your name or speak all manner of lies against you. And as a result of that, you have decided to hide away from the world. You have decided to resent yourself to that isolated place, the four corners of your house. I don't know who I've reduced you. I don't know whose familiar voice, whose credible voice. Whose voice is credible? The voice that people hear and run with. I don't know whose voice have lied against you, but I'm here to tell you that believe in the report of God. Learn to count your blessings. Listen, before the enemies, if you learn to count your blessings, you will realize that even before the enemies think, before the enemies start thinking to strike you, hmm, you have already gone past that place. Ah, I love that song. Ikbera Ivane Oedo, Ikbera Ivane O, Ekenegi Anate Ogi Megadi, 
Igbera e wa ne o ekene gi ana te ke ime Igbera e wa ne o They thought oh if we strike him like this he will fall she will fall but fortunately for them you have gone past that place you are above that that level that they talked if they strike you there you will fall you don't pass there you know the day again you've passed that level where they can just easily strike and you fall yakata but you have reduced you have you have reduced yourself thinking other people are reducing you did you get job refused to listen to the familiar voice the voice of his wife the convincing voice the credible voice the believable voice but that voice though it was credible believable convincing another you know that what was coming out of that voice is not of god it's not the report of god about me it's not what god have chosen for me you know what for that simple action of job to refuse to believe in those negative voice that was speaking to his ear. The Bible says, God restored everything that Job lost in thousand folds, multiple. He, that's, he blessed him double of everything he had. And there was Job thinking he was rich. Job was thinking he was, even the devil was thinking Job had it all. Not knowing that. His tribulation, hmm, his blasphemy in a great job. His tribulation, the trouble he thought he brought to Job was to escalate Job to a bigger level, to a better Job, to a job that everybody now talked about, everybody want to be like, but nobody want to suffer what he suffered. Did you get? I don't know what I'm talking to. Whatever situation you're going through, whatever trouble you're going through, whatever trouble that befall you 2018, 2019, God says, I should tell you, it is the end of a decade. Your trouble has buried. Ah! Be ready for divine acceleration. Another decade is about to begin. It is the end. 2020 is the end of a decade. And whatever trouble that have troubled you are gone. 2020 it is a year of preparation. The Lord is preparing you for a better glory. But you have to queue to it. 2021. Ah, oh, jeez. Then we hear. Then we hear. And the same mouth who mocks you. The same mouth who say all manner of rubbish about you. Then we come back to say of a truth. You are a child of God. Of a truth you serve the living God. And so shall it be. In the name of Jesus. My lady Patricia. Good to see you on board. My eye just catch your comment. I've not been reading comment. But my eye catches yours. Good to see you on board. Happy new year to you. It doesn't matter what you're going through. Forget about what those tongues. That are anointed to bring you down. Like that of the wife of Job. Forget about them. Focus on where God is taking you to. Count your blessings. Oh. Some of you are counting. Ah, oh, since when this man leave me, this when this woman leave me, my life has become, and uh, people are talking about me. People are this. People said I'm single mother. Have you count your blessings in the area? Your happiness. You have been so happy since when that one devil that came to you in the form of a human being came into your life since he left. Since he made his exit. Not with any fault of yours. You try as much as you, as you can to put them together. You try as much as you can to hold him down. To hold her down. But no. No. She wasn't meant to be. He wasn't meant to be. He left. She left. Have you can't sit back to count your achievements since then? All your achievements. Have you bothered to count it? Why are you focusing on? She can't do me this. He can't do me that. He can't leave me. Come go follow another girl. Hello. What about the achievement? Since he left the achievements you have made. Or you have decided to stock up yourself in that same pit that Joseph was placed in before he was sold to slavery. Eh? You forgot. You don't want to look to that. 
the happiness that you have now, the freedom that you have now, the rest of mind that you have now, the lack of worries that you have now. Don't have you to worry what's he doing now, what's she doing now, what's she up to what? Hello? Hello? Stop it. Stop focusing on your letdown. Stop focusing on your heartbreak. Stop focusing on that one particular person who disappointed you. Focus on your blessings. Focus on your blessings. There was a time you looked tattered. There was a time you looked wretched. There was a time you looked as if you were still in one remote village where you were in the western world where every opportunity is made available to you. But because of that one devil who came to you in a human's form, you were reduced to nothing. But now, God made an exit for them to go. And then you are still killing yourself. Why are you killing yourself? Let me pick this call. Hello? Hello, my beautiful sister. How are you? I'm good. Did you know I'm live? Okay. So I'll call you when you are done. Please do. All right. All right. Thank you. All right. Yeah? Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah? Please. Stop focusing on the person who did you wrong. Stop focusing on how you will revenge how you want this person to die tomorrow, next tomorrow, and forgetting to run with what the open doors that the Lord is placing before you. Stop it. Stop, 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 stop. Some tribulation comes sometimes to catapult you to a better place. Did you get? Sometimes society things just happen to, to make you, to wake you up from your slumber. Don't you get it? I'm going to give this an instant. There was a time, yeah? My knuckles, I've always had this problem of knuckles anyway. They come and they go. Right from childhood, it's always been like that. I have this naturally dark knuckles. Then there was a time that, I don't know who was it that time. Was it table shaker or something like that? Took mine, take snap pictures of my dark knuckle. Why? Because that period had made so many says. I'm almost... 85% of those things that I made, mean, they would ask me, please treat it for me. And me now, because business was booming, customers were coming left and right, I didn't care anymore. And I know that I have this sensitive skin that react to anything at all. And I forgot that I have this naturally black knuckles that if I don't take care of it, eh, you will see them with the way the way they will go black so instantly. You will be shocked, like, what's going on? I forget. Ah, I wash, you know, to treat these things in its chemicals. Whether, you know, conditioner or whatever, these are made of chemicals. Even your natural soap that you used to take your bath, they are made of different chemicals. I started, ah, all of a sudden, they burned my locals back. Oh, Jesus. And they snapped my locals. Ah, that was a wake-up call for me. Like, oh, hey, B&B, no lemon, carry you go look, your locals are burned. No, I, at the time, I didn't give it them. I had to find out what do I do to clean this nanocos. Well, thank God, God, you somebody also on social media to reach out to me like, me and be look, 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 try this, try that, try this. And boom! Look at it. was clean like magic. It cleaned like, I'm even, I started to wonder like, maybe I should stop this, it's getting too much. You understand? Sometimes, why am I saying this? Sometimes some trouble happen to wake you from your sleeping mood to wake you from your slumbering mood to look okay look 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 stop taking too many those things too much at heart like hey she said this he said this and then they said this they said that forget it stop letting what people say but you reduce you rather work on yourself work on yourself and you will be better sometimes some tribulation comes you know why they come to knock you off your balance. Yes. Some trouble come to knock you off your balance. Devil can pick on anybody. Why they think they are doing right? They are just serving as a tool to knock you off your balance. But if you know how to cue into the word of God. If you know how to look into yourself. Examine yourself like, okay, am I this? Am I that? You will know how to just come out of your predicaments. I'm telling you. So you that is watching me right now, I don't know what you're going through. You feel like your life is over. 
Whatever you're going through, whatever situation you're going through right now, is starting to get to you so bad. So bad that you are forgetting where God has taken you away from. You are forgetting where God is bringing you from. You've forgotten your past, how bad it was compared to where you are now. And you are thinking, you're finished. God says, I should tell you, concentrate on your blessings and forget about your losses. Sometimes you have to lose in order for you to win in a bigger way. Did you get? Sometimes you have to lose in order for you to win in a bigger way. There are some of you, your children will be taken away from you. There are some of you who are watching me now. Your children will be taken away from you. In this Western world, because Africa will not see like that. Even right now, Africa will begin to copy that. Your children were taken away from you by the government. Whatsoever. You think it is the end of the world for you. Listen. Sometimes God walks in a mysterious way. Hmm? You have sit down. Check that. It is no fault of yours. You did all your best as a mother could do. Just one, for one tiny little mistake like this. You know that that mistake is not something you will want to repeat. It's not something that is you. It's just a tiny little mistake like this. And your children were taken away from you. Listen. I am telling you today. God says I should tell you. It is not your making. <laughs> oh my God. Every man, for every man, every woman that is born into this world, you have destinies. And God have a way he has cast out your destinies before it can be made manifest. You have to go through a process. Your children are going through a process for a better person, a better version of them to come through. You are going through a process. Stop killing yourself. Rather, do everything that is possible for you to be a better person in order to be in a in connection with your children in the future. Yes. Don't kill yourself. Don't bury yourself. Don't let what the word is saying make you become worse than you were before your children were taken away from you. Rather, work on yourself. Pick up yourself. Bat yourself. Clean up yourself. Focus. 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 You will get there. You will get there and your story will be set to encourage other. Did you get? Are you getting me? Never, ever kill yourself because of what you're going to. Forget about what the word will say. Who is the word? The word is the devil himself. Yes. The word itself is a devil who has come to take away your peace. Your happiness, your self-esteem, even your future. They have come to cover your glory. But hey, know when the devil is at work. And keep deaf ear to the voice of the devil, to the voice of the word. And kill into the report of God. Never, ever let what people will say bring you down. If Job have let what the wife said bring him down he wouldn't have acquired double of everything that he lost did you get relax yourself forget it but stop comparing yourself to any other person you are not me i'm not you stop comparing yourself to me b and b is married b and b after how many children b and b is this even after many children she look like this she can't speak english she can't do this hello what about what you can do that you have, you, that is, you have forgotten what you can do? Focusing on what I can do. Did you know that God created everybody with a different destiny? Your destiny might look like mine, but there is something that make it a bit slightly different along the way. Don't you get it? Relax. Stop letting people define you. Eh? People may find you. People may come across you. People might come into your life. But trust me, no matter what people do to you, people say about you, people say of you, or people relate, however people relate with you, it does not define who you are. That is why the word of God says, examine yourself. It did not say, let 
people examine you, examine you. He did not say, let the world examine you. He said, examine yourself. You alone can tell what is inside of you. Whether anybody believes you, whether anybody take you for it, whether anybody, whatever. It doesn't matter. What matter is you know who you are. You know yourself. You know that whatever happened to you, fine, you made a mistake, but that does not define you. Your mistake did not define you. Your mistake must have cost you some certain, whatever it is, it cost you, but it doesn't define you. That is not who you are. It's just a mistake you made along the line that cost you wherever you are now. But hey, you are bigger than your mistake. You are bigger than the situation you are now. You will go past it if you just learn how to count your blessings and forget your losses. Kill in on the report of God about you, not the report of the world. Do not let what the world says about you catapult you to demote yourself from where God has placed you into a lesser place. Many of you do that because of what happened to you, because of the situation you are now, because of what people say about you, you reduce yourself, you demote yourself from where you are to where God has actually destined that you will be. You even reduce yourself from where you are now. You start doing anyhow because of what the world throws at you. Never, ever lost yourself in the process. I'm going to take some comments now. And in this comment session, if there's anything you have been praying for, if there's anything you want to, you want us to pray in agreement with, right now, bring it up and let us pray. I'm taking messages now. I'm taking comments and I'm taking prayer requests now. Anything you want God to do for you, bring it up and God will do it. I know where God is taking me to. I am not there yet. And until I'm there, no one have the power no forces have the power to terminate my life. Mm. It is my year of greater glory. Whether the devil like it or not, my glory must be made manifest. I don't know about you, but I'm telling you of me. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And sure, definitely, that greater one that is in me must be made manifest. And every tongue that rises up against this glory of God upon my life shall be condemned in the name of Jesus. Every tongue that rises up against where God is taking me to shall be condemned. Because I serve a living God who said he is God that will put a nation down for another one to stand. Therefore, any nation, any Goliath who has said, they have come to terrorize me and the glory of God upon my life. They shall be put down. Their heads shall be cut off in order for my glory to be made manifest. So shall it be for me today, tomorrow, and forever. In the name of Jesus. Every tongue that rises up against me in judgment shall be condemned. Say the word of God. And the God that I serve, the God that I know, the God that I've dedicated my life to physically, spiritually, in every area of my life, my totality, I have dedicated to this God. And this same God said, is what he has spoken. None of them shall go back to him void. Ah, God Almighty. They shall not go back to him void because they are made to fulfill the purpose for which he has spoken it for. So any man, any woman, any strong man, strong woman, strange man, strange woman, incarnating, inca whatever they are doing, whatever is it, conversating, incarnating, whatever they are doing against my life, they shall repeat in thousand folds, but none of them shall come near me, say the word of God. It is written. No weapon of the wicked formed or fashioned against me shall prosper. And so shall it be in the name of Jesus. He said they shall gather together. Mm. But because their gathering is not of my making, I did not give them the permission to do so. Then I did God Almighty give them the permission to do so. He said they shall scatter for my sake. They shall scatter. And so shall it be in the name of Jesus. He said, no weapon 
form of fashion against me shall prosper. He said, in one way they will come, but in seven ways they shall scatter in the name of Jesus. A thousand shall fall by my side. And 10,000 shall fall by my right hand side. But none of them shall come near me. Only with my ears and my eyes I will behold and I will hear that the wicked who wish me down, who wish me to cover my face in shame, reap all the evil that they plot against me. Cover their, sh their heads in shame upon shame. But they shall not come near me, says the word of God. Yes! God is not a living God, except He did not create the world. Ah, Jesus, except He's not my creator. But so long as He is God, His word is forever yea and amen. Every evil perpetrator against my life shall carry their evil upon their own head in thousand folds, and so shall it be in their sleep. So shall it be when they are awake. Even in their dreams, so shall it be. So shall it be for them by day. Though so shall it be for them by night. In the name of Jesus. Fear not. For he that is with me is bigger than he that rules. The ones who have chosen to rise up against the power of God in me. It is written it is written, yes, it is written. When the enemies raise up like a flood against me, the mighty hand of God, God Almighty shall raise up a standard against them. So fear not. What do you fear? Oh, you child of God, fear not. It is your year of divine acceleration. Don't let that trouble that you face now put you down. Fear not. Do not fear the faces of your adversaries. Fear God and his word alone. Cue into his word and let his word cut apart you. I don't care what mistake you have made in the past. I don't care where you think you have got it wrong. I don't care any way that you've deviated away from the mission that God gave you. God is telling you, cue into my will tonight. And I will fight your battles while you hold your peace. Yes. You have not even imagined your eyes have not seen, neither have your ears heard. You have not, it has not even come to your imagination what God has in stock for you. Relax. It is not all trouble that are meant to pull you down. So trouble are just meant to shake you to know where you're supposed to be. You all remember Jonah. Oh my God, I can't stop preaching about Jonah. Jonah has a mission. Jonah has a place he has to go. Jonah has a place where his destiny has to be fulfilled. Jonah has a mission from God. The mighty hand of God was upon Jonah. But Jonah was right trying to run away from this mission. From his destiny. Jonah tried to run away from his destiny. His destiny was of greatness. His destiny was to pull men and women to God. His destiny was to uplift the name of God. His destiny was to take the message of God and pass it to the common man. His destiny was to fulfill that which the Lord had destined him to be on in life. But no, Jonah wanted to take the shortest route. Because he doesn't want to go there. Because he feared what men will do to him than what God will do to him. Jonah feared. The report of the world. Jonah listened to the report of men. Jonah feared what the wicked world would do to him. Than what God would do to him. Or where God is taking him to. Jonah let the report of the world. supersede the report of God upon his life. And he wanted to take the shortest route. He wanted to run away from his destiny. He wanted to do it like the pagans do. But do you know what God do? Because the hand of God was upon Jonah already. Ah, there are many of you, the hand of God is upon your life. You are deviating from where God is placing you. Listen, there are some trouble you face sometimes. It is God needing to shake the sheep. God needs to shake the sheep. The sheep need to be shaken for you to realize that you have a call upon your life. This is a message for those who are called by the name of the Lord. The pagans will not understand this, but those who are... Chosen by God here. We, he said, the deep collect unto the deep. Did you get? There are some decisions you make. 
There are some decisions you make that is not of God. God is going to shake you until you listen to him. Oh my God. And I pray that you listen, that you not be a stubborn type that do not get the message when he's coming to you. Yes. Jonah tried to run away. He ran into the ship. What happened? A heavy storm came. And this storm was not ordinarily. It was of God. The Bible says, the word of God says, the people, the people who own the ship, the ship owners, they threw everything in the ship away. All the goodness, the food, the, I can imagine, the luggages, every good thing that the people in the ship, or half in the ship, was thrown out into the sea. Because they thought, oh, you know, we need to throw some heavy weight out. We need to throw some things out, some goodness out for the ship to balance. But it was a lie. But Jonah know, Jonah know, Jonah know that, hey, that's the spirit of designment. Though he was trying to run away, but he, no, he has the spirit of designment like many of you have, but you are still being very adamant. You are stubborn. You don't want to listen. Your self-righteousness have taken over you. Your self-acclaimed boss man, boss lady have taken over you. You don't want to listen. When God is talking, your know it all have taken over you. Your act of listening to what people will say, what this one will say, have taken over you. Yes. Z Jonah, though he was running away from his destiny, he knew he had the spirit of designment. He knew that mm -mm, this is not naughty, this is the finger of God here. After they have thrown everything away, the ship was not, there was no rest in the ship. The wind was still so much, the storm was still so much that they, every one of them was going to cover, cover side. The ship was going to cover side. The ship was going to sink and everybody was going to die. That was when Jonah said, you know what? It is not your problem. I know what it is. Just throw me out. They got a boat, Many of you, wherever you are, that is not of God. The God is God that you serve. The God who have a better place for you, who have a divine destiny, is going to throw you out. I don't care where you find yourself now. Oh my God. Wherever you are, that is not of God. Wherever you find yourself now, out of a comfort zone, out of you trying to make the easiest way out, you are there. You are managing. Let me just stay here. Let me. God will cause something, will cause a storm to happen that will throw you out for there, from there in order for, for your destiny to be fulfilled. And so shall it be in the name of Jesus. Listen, everybody is not, it is not the same destiny. Everybody is not the same destiny. We don't carry the same grace. We don't carry the same destiny. We don't carry the same anointing. So if your anointing is that, that it is by fire, by force that you must fulfill it. You must fulfill your destiny. You have no choice. Something will happen. You have to get out of there. You must get out of there whether you like it or not. Jonah have to get off the ship. Jonah need to go to a place where his destiny has to be fulfilled. God has a finger on him. He was not going to let it go. Ha! The finger of God was upon Jonah. He was not going to let it go whether you like it or not. There are some people when you disobey God, God just lets you, okay, go. But there are others. When you disobey God, something will happen to shake you, to get you back to your right senses. Jonah know that, hey, okay. The word of God said, Jonah went to them and said, you know what? It is not your fault. This time I know what is happening. Whatever you are throwing out now, it's not a problem. Just throw me out of this ship. I don't belong here. Throw me out so that every other person can survive. The word of God said, they look at each other. What can we do? Uh -uh. They said, no, no. You are human like us. We can't throw you out. Uh -uh. No, no, no. We love you. Mm -mm. The trouble become intense until they throw Jonah out of the ship. Jonah need to fulfill his destiny. Jonah need to fulfill his destiny. Whether, go, whether he likes it or not, he must go there. But it was a way of God taking him to a place of destiny. So I don't know whatever tribulation you go to now. When they threw Jonah to the sea, Jonah did not die. The shark swallowed Jonah up and take him to Nineveh. Where his destiny has to be fulfilled. Where his greatness has to be made manifest. Where the glory of God upon his life has to speak volume. You understand? He has to get there. 
Why am I saying this? Many of you are in that same ship right now. It looks like the trouble when they don't be small. He's waving and he's waving. And the Lord is telling you, get out of here. Go to where I place you. No. You all human understand you are playing stubborn. For some of you, God has practically openly tell you, no, you are not supposed to be here, but you are stubborn. Tribulation will come. You will have to leave. You must leave, whether you like it or not. Whether you like it or not, you must leave there. So when tribulation comes sometimes, what am I trying to say? Some tribulations are meant to remove you from your comfort zone. Are meant to deviate you from the ugly road that you have chosen. Are meant to take you away from where you have chosen. Are meant to remove you from the diversion that you have taken that is not the right way to your destination. God has to remove you from there. And when that happens, can't it all joy? No wonder the word of God says, in everything, give thanks to God. Because you have no idea. In all human understanding, you think, oh, why me, why me? But God is taking you somewhere. Huh? God is taking you somewhere. There is no shine that is above Jesus' shine. Huh? No happiness is above Jesus' happiness. I'm telling you, when you have him, you have everything. When you have Jesus, you don't have time to jealous another because you will be contented. If you find yourself not contented with who you are, what you are at that moment, why is working a process out for you to get to your next level, then you are not of God. When you find yourself feeling like you have to put a brother down, put a sister down for you to get to where you are, my dear, or where you want you, for you to get to where you want to be, my dear, you, that is not of God. The Spirit of God make you feel all fulfilled. The Spirit of God make you glow. Let me tell you, it says, there is no other name that is above the name of Jesus. Until that measuring the name, every knee, I don't know what that knee is said about. He said, every tongue will confess. What is that tongue? Every tongue has a name. Every tongue has a name. Don't you get it? Whatever trouble you are going through has a name. Any sickness you have in your body now, it has a name. It has a name. And the word of God says, I think that measuring the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. I don't know whatever tongue I've chosen to speak against your life. I don't know whatever knee that I've chosen to bow against you. But it is written. Every knees will bow at the dimension in the name of Jesus. I don't know whatever legs I've chosen to stand against you, whatever tongue I've chosen to speak against you. God says, cue into my word and every knee, every leg will crumble. When your knee bow, your leg crumble. Every leg will crumble. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus be Lord. Give your life to him. You under him. Forget about what people say about you. You are you. You are you. You are unique. You are wonderful. Stop counting other people's blessings. Forgetting to count yours. Stop counting your losses. Remove your eye from the losses. All those losses of yours. Count the blessings in it. Just count the blessings in it. There are some of you. Hmm? 30 something years old. <laughs> You have children. That is something years old going to 40. 40 something. You have children, but the father of your child. Not for your own making. There are some of you who are for if it is your making, if it is your fault, if it is your behavior, your manner, your anyhow behavior that causes it. Repent and walk and get your life back. And ask for God's forgiveness and the forgiveness of the person you have wronged. But for some of you, it is not your making. You tried. Oh, well, even a cocoa boss say, yeah. You tried all you could do. You tried your best to save your marriage, to save your relationship. For where? It's not meant to be. It has to go. It has to go. I'd rather for you to count your blessings at 40 something, at 40, at 30 something. You have how many children to show for it? What about those who have been married? I heard about a lady who was 50 something, I'll be 62 years old, had uh, twins, I'll be a child. Was on Facebook, trended the last two weeks. At Imagine 62. It's nice having the first child. And you are 30 something, you have how many children? 
rather for you to be grateful to what God has given you. Rather for you to be grateful to what God has changed on it. Not only that he changed on it, he gives you means for which these children will not suffer with or without their father. You are there. Can't see all the wrong where their papa do you. Spoiling the children's mind against their father. Your papa not this, your papa not that, your papa not. What is your problem? Why are you dwelling on your errors? Why are you dwelling on the error of the one who was your trouble, your problem? But because he now exists, you are complaining. I don't understand the way human being behave. You. you are with somebody who caused you nothing but pain, uh, agony. And now you are at, you are complaining about him, spoiling his or her name here and there. Why don't just be happy? Be calm and jubilate. Honestly, count your blessings and forget your sorrows. Count your breakthrough and forget your setback. Stop dwelling on your setback. Rather, dwell on the multiple breakthroughs that you have achieved. Remember what God said about you and remember where God is bringing you from. Remember what, where God has brought you from. Mm -hmm. Sometimes think back and stop beating yourself over his spilled milk. Do you understand? Do you understand? Exactly. Ingratitude is a sin. Unappreciative mindset is a sin. When you are the type you don't know how to appreciate when anything good happens to your life, you don't know how to appreciate God or appreciate the people that made it happen, it is a sin. It is a sin. That is why God says, in every situation, give me thanks. So that is the only way you will invite me into the situation. He says, God in a bit in the praises of his people, complaining, you make God far away from you. Looking all sad and dejected. We make God far away from you. Looking like now let you want that you want. Now let you want that kind of thing don't happen to you before. It will make God far away from you. What will make God even more far away from you is you trying to bring other people down because you are in that situation. You want it to make sure say, I don't believe you want that situation. Say, this one share from me. This one share from me. We make God hide his face more away from you. Don't do that. Never do that. There are many people, when they are in one bad situation or the other, they want to make sure that they are not the only one there. They want to drag as many people as they can to that situation. Even if it means blaspheming against these people, lying against these people, cooking up all manner of lies against these people just to make sure they share in their predicament. God will hide his face more far away from you if you are that time. Stop counting your losses. Count your blessings and let the name of God. Stop, stop being bitter about what people do to you. But rather, focus on since when they do this thing, since they did this thing to you, what have you achieved? How have God elevated you from them? Yes, since they did that thing to you. How have God elevated you? How have God blessed you? How have God disappointed their expectations? Dwell on that. And you will see, things will just begin to work for your own good. All right. Time to take some prayer requests. I pray the Lord bless his word into your heart this evening. In Jesus' name. Let me take some prayer requests. We are staying too long now. What time is it? Oh. Okay. I think we are within two hours, right? Uh, we are within two hours now. So yeah, we are running up. Come up with your prayer request. It's and let's pray together. And then there's questions and prayer requests. Come on, come on, guys. Come on, say something. Say something. Questions and prayer requests. You not give thanks to God. Exactly. For that's his will. Concerning us. Give thanks to God. Whether good or bad. When anybody do you wrong, just say, God, I thank you for letting this happen. Let your will be done. Vindicate me. That's the prayer to pray. Not, don't start praying. This person must start Vindicate me, God. Vindicate me, for my life is in your hands. You, you know, when the trouble, when the weight become too much for Jesus, you remember the prayer they prayed. If it is your will, let this pass me by. You see, you all need to start studying your Bible. If it is your will, God, let this pass me by. Father, 
if this is your will, let it pass me by. Because even Jesus felt the weight. He felt what the word was throwing at him. He felt the pain of the word. He felt the, 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 the betrayer of the word, the wicked word. He felt the weight on top of him. He did not, if he had just commanded, it would have happened. But rather, he said, if it be your will, let it pass me by. But if it is not your will, let your will be done. Let it be. Learn to apply such praise and watch how God fights and vindicates you faster than you think. Yes. Please pray for me. Pray for me for them to grant me visa in the name of Jesus. Okay, now listen. I don't know where you are seeking visa to. But my first prayer is that the will of God be done. If you are seeking this visa, where you are seeking this visa to, is where God desire for you to be. You desire it, but God has to confirm it. If God confirmed it, if it is where we do you well, if it is where your glory will be made manifest, if it is where you will succeed and not die, May the will of God be done. May everyone that is involved in granting you this visa, as your fight come before them, in the mighty name of Jesus, may them do you good. May favor speak for you in the name of Jesus. May favor speak for you. May all protocols be broken for your sake in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Amen and amen. Amen. He said, I want my God to heal me. Whatever is going through your body, it is not the will of God that anybody fall sick. Yes, Lord, mighty God in battle, you created the world, you created the human, and you have every of the spare parts, mighty God. I commit this, whoever this is, into your able hands. Uzo. Anna, Uzo. I pray, Lord, everlasting Father, wherever she is, Heal her, O oh Lord. Meet her at the point of your needs, or at the point of her needs, O oh Lord. Heal her in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever pain you feel in your body, whatever sickness or disease in your body, it is written by the reason of the anointing, every yoke is broken. By the anointing of God, I declare upon your life today, every yoke of any sickness or diseases over your life, I declare them broken today in the name of Jesus. And I say, receive your healing in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. You are healed in the name of Jesus. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, we plead the blood of Jesus to flush out every sicknesses or diseases in your body. Receive your healing in the name of Jesus. You shall not die, but you shall live to declare the good works of God. In the name of Jesus, you will testify. You will testify in the name of Jesus. It is written, our body is the temple of the Most High God. Your body, I declare, the temple of God today. And I declare that you click, cue into this prayer, cue into this declaration. Your body become the declaration, become the temple of God today. And we declare in the name of Jesus that you receive the healing power of God. Because where God dwells, sickness have no room. Where God dwells, diseases have no place. Therefore, every corners of your body... Every angles of your body, your bloodstreams, your bone, every cells and marrows in your body. In the name of Jesus, we declare the healing power of God in the name of Jesus. Every organs in your body, we declare that it received the divine hand of God. Receive your healing today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We declare in the name that is above every other name. He lays his hand upon the sick and the receiving. And he says, I shall do greater things. We shall do greater things. Therefore, by the utterances of the Most High God, that I shall lay my hands on the sick and they shall receive their healing. Wherever you are, wherever you are right now, there is no distance in the realm of the Spirit. I lay my hands upon you right now. And I say, receive your healing. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, amen in Jesus' name. Settled. You are healed in Jesus' name. Cue in. Let your faith be at work and so shall it be. You are healed in Jesus' name. Go, just go and do check up. Go and run a test. Go and do whatsoever. You will see that you are healed. Yes, you are healed in the name of Jesus. By the power in the name of Jesus, you are healed. By the power of the Trinity of the Holy Spirit, God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, you are healed in Jesus' name. Amen. My heart is broken. Pray for me. 
I don't know whatever is it that breaks your heart, but today I declare, it is written, it shall send us the comforter. Uh, yes, it shall send us the Holy Spirit, the comforter. I declare the comforter, the Holy Spirit to descend upon you right now, to heal you, to open your eyes to your blessings rather than your losses in the name of Jesus. Whatever has broken your heart right now, I pray divine healing upon you in the name of Jesus. May the Lord give you the grace to pick up your pieces and start up all over again in Jesus' name. Whoever is it that has broken your heart, may God replace them with a better, better, in fact, best version of them. In your life in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And amen. My sister, you that said your heart is broken, get up, take a good shower, go out. The Lord have a good thing for you. He have special, special delivery for you. You just have to be ready to receive it. Put aside whatsoever you think that have broken you. There is a reason for everything. Count your blessings and not your losses. Count your blessings and not your losses. In Jesus' name. Pray for me that God grant me my heart desire. Every good heart desire of yours. Whatever you desire that is good. So long it's not to the detriment of any other human being. So long it's not to your own detriment. Everything that you desire of God that is good. May the Lord grant it unto you in Jesus' name. May you receive your heart desire this year 2020. A year of breakthrough. A year of your divine testimony. A year of your greater glory. A year of divine acceleration. I declare unto you in the name of Jesus. Whatsoever you desire that is good. Whatsoever you desire that is not going to kill another person. But rather catapult you to your success. May you have it in Jesus' name. Amen. And may the Lord give you the grace, the vision, the zeal to walk towards your heart desire. And may God give you the power, the power, the zeal to walk towards your heart desire. And may you take the chances. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, 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 and amen. You are welcome, my lady. You are welcome. God bless you. Come on. Any prayer request, any prayer request, any prayer request, it is well with you and shall continue forever to be well with you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Whatever your heart desire, the Lord shall grant it unto you. The God, God that I serve, the God that you believe in, the anointing that you kill in tonight shall deliver it unto you easily. So long as it's to the glory of God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I prayed for God's divine healing and um, financial settlement. May the Lord grant your prayers in the name of Jesus. May your prayer, prayers and supplication before God be granted in the mighty name of Jesus. May as you request from God, as God tells you, whatever God asks you to do, may the Lord give you the grace to obey his word in the name of Jesus. You have faith that you have tendered your prayers. You have faith, that's why you tender your prayer today. But remember the word of God says, faith without work is dead. Everything that the Lord plays in your heart to do towards that which you have requested for, may the Lord give you the grace to carry it out. And as you do, may success be your result all the way through. In Jesus' name, amen. Pray for my kids. Mm. Pray for my kids, Father, to be taking care of my kids and to be uh, to call because he doesn't care for them. Yes, now. In the name of Jesus, wherever you the father of your children are. It is his duty to care for his children. Wherever he is, tonight we arrest his heart. We arrest everything. His totality we arrest it today in one accord in the mighty name of Jesus. He joined bringing these children into his world, into this world. Therefore, it is his duty to do so. By the power, by the ocean of God upon my life, I arrest him today. In the name of Jesus, we declare, he will not have peace. He will not have rest. Until he start caring for his children. In the name of Jesus. I may everything that he need to care for his children. Not be difficult for him to achieve. In Jesus mighty name we declare. Amen. Amen. It shall be well with you my sister. It shall be well with you. It shall be well with you. The father of your kids wherever he is. The Lord shall touch them to do what is needed of them. And that is to take care of their children. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. 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 And amen. Pray for divine protection upon my children. 
May the Lord protect your children. Children are of God. God gave them to you. Therefore, no power can take them away from you. Wherever your children is, wherever they are, wherever they are, I declare the mighty hand of God upon them to shield them with his mighty wings in the mighty name of Jesus. Wherever your children are, the Lord shall shield them with his mighty wings in their going out and coming in. They shall be blessed. They shall be protected. No evil shall come near them in the name of Jesus. And as you do so, plan no evil against another person's children as well. That is what the Lord lays in my heart to tell you. It shall be well with your children day and night. It shall be well with them in everything they do it shall be well with them in jesus mighty name we pray no weapon from a form of fashion against your children shall prosper they are covered with the blood of jesus from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet we see and sanctify with the blood of jesus christ every hand that raised up against your children may that hand wither in the name of jesus every tongue that speaks against them may those tongue be cutting out of their mouth in the name of jesus may their tongues be joyed in jesus name we condemn every tongue raising up against your children. And so shall it be now and forever in Jesus' name. Do no evil against another man's child. So that this prayer will be effective. Please help me pray for my document issue that this year, 2020, will not pass me by. In the mighty name of Jesus, all protocols shall be broken for your sake. Yes, in the mighty name of Jesus, all protocols shall be broken for your sake. It is written, it is said, and it is declared tonight, and so shall it be. The grace of God shall speak for you. 2020, you will testify. Your document will be released for you, so long as you are due for it. The law of the land, you kill it. Listen, Jesus did not come to break laws, but he come to make sure that the laws are fulfilled. But this time, in a lighter weight, so that it do not consume you, but rather help you. That is what Jesus came from. Came for. Therefore, I declare in the name of Jesus, so long as everything that you have tendered is what they require from you, even the ones that they need from you that you could not afford, protocol shall be broken for your sake. It shall be well with you and your document shall be released this year. 2020, you will testify in Jesus name. Amen. I need prayer for my children and business. It shall be well with you. It shall be well with you. It shall be well with you. Osarodion, God is the senior in your life and his will shall take place over your children in the name of Jesus. It is well with you. Fear not for his that is with you. He is bigger than every forces that might rise up against you or that is rising up against you. Fear not. It is well with you and your children in Jesus' name. It is well with you. It is well with you. It is well with you. The Lord says you should fear not. That his hand is already over your children. Fear not. Fear not. The Lord says I should tell you you should fear not. His hand is already upon your children. Fear not. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. And so shall it be. Please, I, um, please my, I need a job. And I need... Prayer for my children. May the Lord grant you the job of your desire. The job that you desire, the Lord shall grant it unto you. So long as you are qualified for it. Yes. Because we live in the Western world where before you get any job, you need to be qualified for it. You are qualified for it and they say, oh, okay, somebody else you can do better here. Come on. The Lord shall break protocols for your sake in the name of Jesus. The Lord shall grant you the job of your choice. So long as you are good at it and it will empower you to do better in that job. As for your children, they are covered with the blood of Jesus. This Lord says, suffer not these little ones to come before me. For theirs is the kingdom of God. Your children, no evil hand shall reach them. Anyone that says they cannot harm you, say they want to harm your children. May their evil bounce back on them in thousand folds. In Jesus name. Your children, they are covered with the blood of Jesus. Your children, they are covered with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Amen, 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 and amen. You don't need to fear. Please, while I pray, guys, say amen, say amen. And as you say amen, though it's another person's prayer, it shall also work for you. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Pray for protection on me. That God should let my daughter join me here in Germany. In the mighty name of Jesus. It is the right thing for you to be 
to be able to have supervision over your children. Yes. God placed these children under your care for a reason. You're supposed to be their guardian angel on earth. Wherever they are, situation permits that. But right now, protocols are going to be broken for the right thing to take place. Your child shall join you. Your daughter shall join you in Germany. Yes. She shall join you in Germany in the name of Jesus. So shall it be. As you walk it, it shall come out so easily. In the mighty name of Jesus. God, whatever it is that needs to be done for her to join you, whether the one that you are able to do or not, the Lord shall grace your effort and it shall come to pass. Your child, your daughter shall join you in Germany in the name of Jesus because it's a good cause. It's not about him, but a good thing. Therefore, the hand of the Lord shall quicken it and it shall come to pass quicker than you expect in the name of Jesus. Your daughter will join you in Germany in good health. In good health, in one peace, in joy, and in testimonies. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. It is well with you and it shall continue to be well with you. In Jesus' name. Thank you, baby. Thank you to, to God be all the glory. To God be all the glory. Pray for all pregnant women to deliver safely. See, the word of God says you will deliver like the, the Hebrew women. So tell us how the Hebrew women deliver. And many people will say you will deliver like the Hebrew women. But I'm telling you today in the name of Jesus. Every pregnant woman. Hmm, children are of God. Every pregnant woman in this season shall deliver successfully in the name of jesus ah whoever is on your case that say they will not see you deliver successfully they will sleep forever so that you will deliver successfully in the name of jesus i have declared and so shall it be in jesus name every pregnant woman shall deliver successfully this season and seasons to come pregnant women shall deliver successfully no one will stand against you no one will hold you back so shall it be and so shall it continue to be. In the name of Jesus. Pregnant women, you shall deliver successfully. Every woman waiting to deliver this period, you will deliver successfully. Ah, it doesn't matter who is on your case. It doesn't matter who have heard that you are pregnant. You will deliver successfully. In the mighty name of Jesus. You will deliver successfully. In Jesus' name. Every pregnant woman going through any fears right now. I want to tell you. There is a pregnant woman. Because of the... You know, when a woman is pregnant. Bad dream. Negative dream. Is constant. It all has to do with the stress you've been through. Throughout the day. Or your subconscious mind. Because of the negativity you have heard. You are bound to dream like that. But for those of you. Who oh, bad dreams, your negative dream have held you captive that fear has eluded you. Fear, fear have overcome you. Eh? I declare in the name of Jesus. May God give you the grace to overcome your fear. Whether you fear, whether you no know fear, whether you dream bad, whether you no know dream bad, you will deliver successfully. And no weapon form of fashion against you shall prosper. It doesn't matter who is aware that you are pregnant or who is not aware that you are pregnant. What matter is God is on your case and you will deliver successfully in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Greater is it that is in us than it that is in the world. That is what the word says. The Lord of God, the word of God says, and so shall it be in Jesus' name. Please pray for my document. You will receive your document in the name of Jesus. Document is your banker. Ah, for those of you queuing under this prayer right now, none of you will be deported. You will receive your document in the name of Jesus. You have come to stay and stay you will. You will not go home except it's on your own accord. Ah, Now you go buy your ticket by yourself say you want to go out. Because document you will get in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Help me play for my sister. He's looking for children. It is written there shall be no barren in the land. Mighty God. It is written, there shall be no barren in the land. I want to pray for every woman, every womb being waiting, every womb that is looking for the fruit of the womb, every woman looking for the fruit of the womb. Listen, when I mean every woman looking for the fruit of the womb, those who are married, if you are not married, 
you are not with a man that is your husband. There is no point of you looking for a woman asking of God because the word of God says, thou shall not commit fornication. People might do it and have children in the process. But sometimes God have a way of making you wallow in sin. And then when you realize, that, okay, I've sinned, you ask for forgiveness. But for you that is listening to me right now, looking for the fruit of the womb, I'm sure those who, who, who had uh, their babies out of wedlock, they weren't looking for the fruit of the womb. They were just friending this man out of ignorance of the word of God that they should not commit the sin of fornication. But they did anyway, and they got pregnant in the process. But for you that is listening to me, for every married woman in waiting, every married woman looking for fruit of the womb, you are the man in your life who is ready. You are ready, but the fruit of the womb is not forthcoming. I want to declare upon your life today, and I declare in the name of Jesus, because it is written that there shall be no barren in the land, I speak upon your womb in the name of Jesus carry your child in jesus name your womb carry your child in the name of jesus whatever be the obstacle that have prevented you from getting pregnant we declare all protocols broken today in the name of jesus receive the fruit of your womb receive the fruit of your womb receive the fruit of your womb the doctors might have their own complaint that oh your husband have a low sperm count you have this listen when the grace of god speak protocols are broken doctors treat but it's god that heal by that same divine healing power of god i declare upon you today in the name of jesus Whatever state your husband may be, receive your child. May your womb carry and nurture your child. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. If you believe it, you will get pregnant and you will testify. And when it happens, do not forget to testify unto God. Do not forget to share your testimony to encourage others to learn to cue in the word of God and in the port of God. You shall be pregnant. There shall be no barren in the land, so you shall not be barren. Any man, any woman that have declared you barren, may their words upon your life become barren in the name of Jesus. May their words have no effect upon you. You will preg be pregnant and you will carry your child in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. It is written, your marriage shall be your blessings and your children surround your table and you will see your children's children, says the word of God. And so shall it be upon your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, yes. I agree with you, my sister. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yes. According to the word of God in Galatians chapter 6 verse 17, it shall be well with you, my sister. You will have your children. They shall be not barren in the land, says the word of God. In Jesus' name. I'm believing God for a daughter. Obviously, you have a son already. May the Lord grant you your heart desire. If it is the will of God. If you having a daughter is what will make you happy. If your the daughter is the one that will bring the glory of God upon your life, not the one that will make you regret ever having a daughter, may it be so unto you in the name of Jesus. Sometimes we will, we wish. But hey, they said, the heart of man, is not of God. God cannot give you what you cannot handle. So long as it's a child, whether he's a boy or he's a girl, just know that God has given you what will favor you, not what will work against you. But however, since you desire a girl child, receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it, but let the will of God be done upon the sense of the child that God gives to you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Please help me pray for my brother and his wife to bless them with the to bless them this year for the fruit of the womb. I have prayed for all the women or the womb be waiting, and your brother's wife is not exempted. He she shall receive a child this year in the name of Jesus. Ah, mighty God in heaven. God, you who blessed me. That I am the one that on my own accord said I don't want to have more children anymore. Father, 
You did it for me. You will do it for every womb being waiting. I place my hand upon my womb tonight and I declare in the name of Jesus, every womb be waiting. May you receive from God. May your womb carry your and nurture your children. May your womb carry and nurture your children in the name of Jesus. You will have your children and you will testify. You are not barren. Let nobody convince you otherwise. You understand? You are not barren. The word of God says, there is no barren in the land. There shall be no barren in the land. You are whole. You are healthy. Your womb shall carry your children in the name of Jesus. In Jesus, mighty, 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 fulfilling, victorious, assurance name we pray. Amen. 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 I feel a release of blessing in the name of Jesus. It shall be well. Listen, you will testify. You will testify, oh my God, for every womb be waiting who queued into this platform and you did what is expected of you. Go and sleep with your husband. Your husband, do. Husband. Sleep with your husband tonight. Oh, la, 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 Sleep with your husband tonight. Sleep with, just continue sleeping with your husband. By the end of 2020, you will carry your child in the name of Jesus. You will carry your child and you will testify in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. We are going to end this broadcast here tonight. For every prayer request that has not popped up right now, I pray as you desire, may it be so unto you in Jesus. In this 2020, every error that you have made in the past, anyone still pointing an accusing finger at you, everyone still pointing an accusing finger at you. So, she was like this, she did that, she did that. And this 2020, you are a brand new person. You are changed. And people are still pointing accusing finger at you. May God vindicate you. May God protect you. May God guide you. May God give you the grace to overcome every accusing finger that is pointed against you. And when God be for you, no one can be against you, says the word of God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Please pray for my sister. Please pray for a sister. She have uh, married for six years now. A lot of miscarriage. Listen, I declare today, I have declared and I'm still declaring, your womb will nurture your child. When I say your womb will nurture your child, when the Spirit of the Lord says your womb will nurture your child, in another word it means there shall be no miscarriage. You don't get it. Oh my God, everlasting Father. I said every womb be waiting to receive. Not only will you conceive, but your womb will nurture your child. You will give birth to them and carry them in person and shall glorify God. There shall be no miscarriages because your womb will accommodate your child. Your womb will nurture your child. Every part of your organs, your body system, your cells, your blood, your marrow, everything in your body will accommodate your child. In the name of Jesus, you will carry your child and your womb will accommodate them. It shall nurture them in the name of Jesus. And you will give birth to your children whole and healthy. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. When I say your womb will nurture your child, I am directly telling you that there shall be no miscarriages in the name of Jesus. First, you need to kill every thought of miscarriages. That voice that has spoken to you several times, you are going to miscarriage again. The fear of gripping you, the fear of taking over you, and because you fear, when you fear whatsoever you fear, you become a fugitive. Whenever you fear, you become a fugitive. Whenever you fear, you become a captive to that particular thing that you fear. The God that I serve, the God that has, the anointing of God upon me today says fear not fear not fear not kill that fear kill that thought of miscarriage away from your mind because the moment you feel you you nurture that fear it becomes you oh my god the moment you nurture your, the fact that it happened before 
doesn't mean it will happen again. But if you bring your past to your present, you are afraid, you are scared. The thought keep coming to your mind every time. That is the devil who have come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And the only way he can overcome you is to bring your fear to you, to cage you, to envelop you, so that he be able to overcome you. Kill that fear. Kill that fear. I don't care how many times you have miscarriage before. God says this time, your wound will carry your child. She will nurture it and give birth to it successfully. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, 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 and amen. It is well with you. It is well with you. Fear not. Go and sleep with your husband. Get pregnant and have your children in peace. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Go and sleep with your husband. Did you hear? Go and sleep with your husband. Go and... Ah, Legarebo. There is a lady here. Listen. You dreamt last night you were having sex in the dream. You dreamt last night. You are pregnant. But you dreamt having sexual intercourse with somebody, with a strange man last night in your dream and you wake up this morning you are panicking you have been panicking you you are you are you are, the fear have gripped your heart because it always happens like that each time you are pregnant it happens like that each time you are pregnant but god says i should tell you that you should fear not fear not he put the child there nobody can take it out in the name of jesus you will carry the child so the full term, and you will give birth to that child against all odds in the name of Jesus. The Lord says, whenever you have that kind of a dream, wake up and plead the blood of Jesus Christ upon yourself. Terminate and eliminate any negativity that relates to such dreams over your life. Terminate it and be free. It is well with you. It is well with you. Fear not. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. And I want to declare for everyone who has been tormented with bad dreams, negative dreams, nightmares here tonight. In the name of Jesus, I declare your dream life from today, you shall be an overcomer. In the name of Jesus, your spirit will no longer be weakened in the faces of your enemies, whether through dream or whichever way. Whatever diverses your enemies might take this time. Whether they come through dream physically or spiritually, whichever manners or way it is written, it disappoints the diversities of the crafty so that their hands can no longer perform their enterprise. Therefore, I declare upon you today in the name of Jesus, whatever diversities your enemies have taken, any crafty way they have chosen to use to manipulate or torment you, whether through dream physically, spiritually, financially, materially, maritally, in the name of Jesus, whether socially or whichever way, I declare in the name of Jesus, may the mighty hand of God disappoint the diversities against your life tonight. In the name of Jesus, the diversities are destroyed, is terminated, disappointed. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 In the mighty name of Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you too. In the mighty name of Jesus. No weapon form of fashion against you shall prosper. Listen. Forget about the, the word has a lot of voices. Forget about what you heard. Anything that you heard that work against your peace is not of God. It's of the devil who have come to kill, to steal, and to destroy the peace that you have. Focus on the report of God about you. Examine yourself to know, is what they are saying about me really me? Am I who they, you know, they describe me to be? If not, cue to the word of God and live your life freely. If truly it is, ask for God's mercy and ask for God's intervention upon your life. And it shall be well with you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. 
Amen, 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 and amen. Ooh, there's somebody here who's tormented nightmare upon nightmare every night before you are even afraid to sleep now. Oh gosh, you are afraid to sleep. You are afraid to sleep now. Whenever you sleep, before you they close your eyes, bad dream does that. You are afraid to sleep. Oh my god, you have become too afraid to sleep. Whenever it's night, your mind is you are panicking already because it's night again. You have to sleep. Listen. God says I should tell you, before you sleep, put the two of your knees on the ground. Mark this prayer. Say, God, I take over my dream life. I declare in the name of Jesus, every subconscious mind working against me, tormenting my life. Every voice, every manipulation of the wicked, every satanic manipulation, witchcraft manipulation, manipulation of any strong man, strong man, hateful man, hateful woman against my life through dream. I overcome you today in the name of Jesus. I am bold. I am not fearful in the name of Jesus. It is well with my soul, my spirit and my body. From now henceforth, my spirit no longer succumb to every satanic manipulation through dream. In my dream, my spirit shall be sensitive. There is somebody here tonight. Anytime you wake up from your dream, you feel bad. Oh, why not do like this? Why not do like that? Because your mind, your spirit is not sensitive. It's not sensitive. You see evil and just play along. And then you wake up. Oh, why did I not do this? Say, God, from today, let my spirit become sensitive. Even in the dream. If they come to me like a friend, like a sister, like a brother, and they are my enemies, Father, let my spirit be sensitive from now on. So that no matter how they came, no matter how they will come, Father, let my spirit be sensitive and let me not succumb to their devices. Let me not succumb to their trick. Let them not succeed in subduing me in whichever way they choose to manifest. I overcome them today in the name of Jesus. Surround your life physically, spiritually, even in the dream with the blood of Jesus, and it shall be well with you. Fear not, because the moment you fear, you have given yourself to them already. Fear not, fear not, fear not, fear not. The same God who created you, they don't get five head. Hmm? It is written, we wrestle not against flesh nor blood, but against principalities, against power. If God knows that you're going to wrestle against those things, He has already given you power to overcome in Jesus' name. Pray for one for the fruit, pray for me for the fruit of the womb. Isata Conte. I don't know whoever is this person behind this account. Isata Conte. You type that name. You write that name there. The moment you write that name, you have signed. You know when they give you a form and say sign. Whatever you sign, it might not be your name that you write there. The way your name is. Even if it's a scribble, you have signed. That is your signature. It represents you. This name is not your real name. No. This is not your real name. But this is the account you choose to come up with. God has decided to show you mercy today. Not minding that it's not your real name. In the name of Jesus, I declare, it shall be well with you. It shall be well with your womb. Whatsoever error you have made in the past, God, almighty God, we look past it. It will not look to your sins. We will not look to your error. But shall look to your heart of gratitude, of desire to want to carry your child. And it shall deliver unto you the seed. A seed. It shall deliver to you a seed which your womb will carry, nurture, and shall give birth to this seed. And the name of God shall be glorified over your life. Receive the fruit of the womb. Receive your child. Receive your children. In Jesus name. You will testify. In Jesus mighty name I pray. Amen. You shall receive it. You will receive it in the name of Jesus. He shall receive, you shall receive, you shall receive. There is no barren in the land. You shall not be barren in the land. You will receive your child. And every tongue that have mocked you will turn around to rejoice with you. Oh my God. Every tongue, all the tears you have shared, all, the, all your regrets, all the tears you have shared, you will return back with the tears of joy this time. In the name of Jesus. It shall be well with you. You will carry your womb. 
You will carry your child in your womb. You will carry your child in your womb. I declare open doors in your womb right now in the name of Jesus. You will carry your child. You will carry your children. Oh my God. I'm not even seeing a child. I'm seeing children. Content. You will carry your children in the name of Jesus. And every tongue that have risen up against you, every tongue that have mocked you, every tongue that have caused you sleepless nights, every tongue that have made you cry and wet your pillows with tears, they shall turn back and say, thank God. They, in that same tongue that they used to call you barren, that same tongue that they used to call you childless woman, that same tongue that they used to psych you and mock you, that same tongue they will use to wish you congratulations. And the name of God shall be glorified over your life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Cry no more. Learn to ask of God rather than complaining. Stop complaining. When you cry, you complain. Except you are crying in gratitude to God. Alright? Stop complaining. God don't listen to complain. He said, ask and it shall be given unto you. He did not say, complain. God don't listen to complain. You all need to understand that. Many of you don't pray, but you complain. Why me? Why this? Why this? What have I not done? I have been praying. Why did you give this and not give this? What am I not doing that I'm not doing? Complain. That is complain. You are not asking. You are complaining. You are complaining. I have done this. I have sacrificed this. I have paid my tax. I have paid my offering. I have helped the blessed privilege. I have done for people. I have helped people and they make it. Why me? Complain. That is complain. That is not asking. Ask is a direct. Don't go Connie, Connie, you are like a thief trying to come through the back door. Go straight to your point. Ask of God. Keep asking. But you're asking. Your result is tonight. You have received it. You will confess. Confess positively to the glory of God. That, hey! I encounter God tonight. This night, go and mark it. You will receive in the name of Jesus. And you will know that the glory of God has come. It is a new dawn. It is a new dawn in your life. It is a new dawn. It is a new dawn. It is a new dawn in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Pray for a sister, Princess Ogbe, for God's restoration in her life. In the mighty name of Jesus, whatever she is going through, the mighty hand of God shall restore back every. Thing that the enemies have taken away from a life, all that the lukewarms, all that the caca worms have eaten away from their life, every lukewarm in their life shall be, in her life shall be restored. All that the locust and the caca worms have eaten away from her life shall be restored in the name of Jesus. It shall be well with her. Whatsoever that is not of God in her life, God Almighty shall intervene and shall restore her back in the name of Jesus. All that she has lost shall be restored back in thousand folds in the mighty name of Jesus. It shall be well with her. It shall be well with her. No weapon form of fashion against her shall prosper. Or oh, whatsoever that is not of God that have played out in her life for too long, tonight is the end of it. In the mighty name of Jesus, this Lord shall restore back all that she has lost. Away from, all that she has lost, the Lord shall return it back to her. The Lord shall restore it back to her. It shall be well with her from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. In Jesus, mighty, mighty, victorious, holy name I pray. Amen. It shall be well with her mentally. It shall be well with her physically. It shall be well with her socially. It shall be well with her spiritually. It shall be well with her in the name of Jesus. Whatsoever that are taking over her, the mighty hand of God shall cut it all off away. Whatsoever that have taken over her against the will of God shall be cut out of her life, and it shall be well with her. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen, 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 amen. Yes, Lord. All that the caca worms and the locusts have eaten out of her life shall be restored in thousand folds. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, amen. Amen, 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 amen. The Lord shall restore her. Amen. I'm looking for a baby boy. May the Lord grant unto you your desire that will work for your good and not for your tears. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Every of your good had desire. All that you desire, all that sometimes we desire what is not going to favor us. Do you know that? So if, whenever I pray that, whenever I use that word, 
all that you desired for your good, that is going to be for your good. I know what I'm talking about. Because they said, Ma proposed, but God disposes. Sometimes we, we want, but God is going to give us what we need, not what we want. Because sometimes we, are, we might want what is not going to be good for us. But because you desire a baby boy, if it is the will of God that is going to benefit you, that is going to do you well, that is not going to make you look back in the nearest future and wish, oh my God, may the Lord grant it unto you in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord grant it unto you in Jesus' name. May the Lord grant him unto you, not it. May the Lord grant him unto you. If you're wishing a baby boy, a baby boy, this baby boy is what is going to make your joy increase. It's what's going to favor you in the future. It's what you're going to look back on and say, God, thank you. It's not what you're going to question God for later. May God grant him unto you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And amen. In Jesus' mighty name. And Chibuzo, you're welcome on board. You're welcome. First time you're walking, watching, if your first time coming here, may you be blessed. May the day you encounter this platform, may your life never remain the way it is now. If you'll be doing well, you shall do better. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Healing in the name, in, healing in the life of my daughter. May your daughter receive healing in the name of Jesus. Whatsoever she is going through, whatsoever is walking contrary to the healing power of God upon, his, upon her life, I declare that they be subjected under the knowledge of the word of God. That he is, she is healed in Jesus' name. Amen. She is healed, she is healed, she is healed, she is healed. From the crown of her head to the sole of her feet, we plead the blood of Jesus. May the blood of Jesus sanctify her from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. He is healed in Jesus' name. And every power, every force is working against her health. We subdue them under the knowledge of the word of God tonight. And in the measure in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. Therefore, we declare healing upon your daughter. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. All right, I have to log out now. We start again to, um, when are we coming online again? Tuesday is a no-no. Um, if we are unable to come online tomorrow, then it will be on Wednesday, hopefully, by the special grace of God. Otherwise, it will be weekend. But Wednesday, I'm keeping my finger crossed on Wednesday, we will be back on live in Jesus' mighty name on Wednesday, 4 p.m. Stay tuned. Wednesday 4 p.m. If I'm not going to be able to come, I will let you guys know. But Wednesday 4 p.m. Stay tuned. And don't forget to place your order from B&B Lazarus, 100% humor hair. Remember what the word of God says, that hair is the glory of a woman. I mean, beauty starts from your head. So yes, place your order and don't forget to do so. May the Lord bless his word into our heart. And as we have, as we have prayed together tonight, as you have received, may not devour May no devour the void these blessings that you have received tonight in the name of Jesus. May the Lord rebuke every devourer that want to come at the void. This word of God that you have heard tonight, these blessings that you have received tonight, any power, any forces that want to devour this, any negative voice that want to come and remove it from your ear, may the Lord silence them, paralyze them, rebuke them for your sake. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you, everybody. God bless you. I'm going to log out now. My lady, Arayere, I love, love, love you. Thank you for staying on board. I always love whenever I see you on board. I love everybody, seeing everyone on board, but I love you especially, and I know why. Your contribution is wonderful. I love people who are present, who are not just waiting to receive a loan. They give out to other people in their comment section as well. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. My lady, Patricia, I know faith. It shall be well with you and your household in the name of Jesus. It shall be well with you and your household in the name of Jesus. It shall be well with you and your household in the name of the Trinity of the Holy Spirit. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. It shall be well with you and your household. In Jesus' name. I pray for each and every one of you today. And as I pray for you, I declare also upon myself, it shall be well with me. It shall be well with me. Many have gone out of me tonight. In the name of Jesus, I declare that they be refilled back in thousandfold. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray.
Amen. May the Lord refill me. May he refill my cup with his anointing. May he refill his anointing upon me. As many have gone out, many anointing have come out of me today. May he refill it back in thousand folds. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Listen, guys. It's 2020. 2019 is gone. Whatever trouble you had in 2019, whoever you had issues with in 2019, let them go. Leave them for God. Don't bring your problem of 2019 to 2020. Anyone that want to carry their trouble from 2019 to 2020, leave them with it. Face your life. Let go. It says, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. There is a reason why God teaches his disciples to pray like that. In order to enable you, to help you to learn to forgive others. Let go. Forgive for your own good and let God vindicate and fight your fight. But by the time you hold anybody who have offended you so much at heart, listen, God is not going to fight for you because it's like you're fighting your own battles. I keep saying this right from the beginning of this platform. Learn to let go for your own good so that God can take up your fight. Say, I will fight your fight and you will hold your peace. But many of you are not holding your peace so that God can fight for you. You want to fight your fight yourself. You are trouble thinking you want to trouble the person who have troubled you. You are doing the running and task getter looking for a way to trouble those who have troubled you. You are disobeying the word of God by doing that. He said, hold your peace. Don't trouble. Don't even try to fight back. Hold your peace. And I will fight your fight. Isn't that his word? That is the word of God. All right, that is the word. He said, this book of life I've given it to you, let it not depart from you. Study it. Let it be part of you so that you do all my will. And one of his will is that you don't try to trouble them that trouble because he is the troubler. When he troubled them, eh, they don't go see what they worry them. So let it go. Let it go. Stop trying to trouble those who have troubled you. Just leave them for God and have your peace. Because the moment you try to trouble people who are troubling you, you are troubling yourself in the process. Stressing yourself over what you should just relax and wash it that knows how to, to fight. Say, vengeance is of the Lord. Haven't you heard it? Vengeance is of the Lord. Yes. He knows that. He said, he is known for executing judgment. That is what the word of God says. He said, I am known for executing judgment. God is known for executing judgment. Vengeance is of his. He is the one that judge. That's why he asks you and I say, do not judge so that you be not judged in the process of trying to judge another. Let go. Hold your peace. And let me fight my fight. For I am known for executing judgment. Vengeance is of me, says the Lord. So let God vindicate you. Let him fight your fight. Let him fight your battles. All you just need to do is sit back, relax, and enjoy the peace that the Lord has given unto you. And watch him trouble them that try to trouble you. He said, is seeing it is a righteous thing unto the Lord to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. Yes, the word of God says that it is a righteous for God, it is righteous for Him to trouble anyone that wants to trouble you, or anybody that seeks to trouble you, or anyone that is troubling you. It is a righteous thing unto the Lord to trouble them that trouble you. So relax. Why are you bothering yourself? Trouble not your troubler, for God who is mighty, who nobody can stand withstand, is going to trouble them that seek to trouble you. So, therefore, child of God, relax, enjoy your peace. For he said, hold your peace and let me trouble your troubler. Yes. He said, I will fight your fight and you shall hold your peace. All right. Love you. His thoughts are not of God. His thoughts for us are for good, of course. His thoughts for us are for good and not for you. So relax your mind. Love you, love you, love you. And see you again on Wednesday. 2020, we are dedicating it to motivate so, to bless so. Enough of all this. 2020, we are dedicating it to bless so. We don't care how many people is watching. We don't care how many people is queuing in. But for the few that we queue in, you're going to be blessed. May the Lord bless his word into your heart. Once again, I'm saying it in Jesus' name. Bye, darling. Bye, bye, bye. Love you, love you, love you, love you. And see you again on Wednesday. I didn't mean to stay this much today. But I've overseed, I've exceeded the time I programmed that I was going to stay. But love you anyway. Bye, guys. Love you, love you. And see you on Wednesday. Bye.